This is HO Train Car Weathering 101 for Newbies. I'm going to show you how to weather this caboose from this to this. So this caboose started out life as a Walther's kit like this. I just bought that as a kit and uh, it came in pieces put it together and here's our final product. Now the unit that we're going to work on and transform is this guy here and he's actually a ready to run model railroad car from the Platinum line. So most of you are going to have probably cars like this that are already put together. Um, this already has the metal wheel sets and what we're going to do is we're going to have to take it apart to be able to weather this properly. I've seen so many videos on YouTube that are just plain horrible on how to weather HO uh, train cars. It's just so I thought, you know what? I'm, I, I got to get out there. I got to show you guys how I do it. I've been doing this for about 20 years. I've been on many of the uh, professional weathering sites. Work with those guys. So um, my type of weathering is going to be the three foot rule. Three foot away, it's going to look fantastic. I am not a rivet counter. This is not getting you know super, super, super detailed and you know uh, looking for uh, nuts and bolts and all that crap because it just takes too damn long. I don't want to spend two or three months working on a car when I got you know a hundred of them sitting on my layout. This is about a yeah one to one and a half week process to get this thing to look uh, this good. You know, and if you guys like this, you know, it's, it's, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's up to you. You guys have seen a lot of stuff that's weathered online. Uh, here's another caboose that I've done. Uh, this is all custom painted and weathered. So if that looks decent to you guys, then uh, go ahead and watch the rest of this and hopefully you'll learn something. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is show you all the supplies that you're going to need to make this happen. Now there are a lot of supplies. You don't need everything and I'll talk about that, but um, there's a lot of basics that you do need to make this, to make your cars look good. So we're going to start there right now. Okay, what is the first thing you need? You need a picture of the victim. Whatever your box car or caboose or locomotive, whatever you're going to weather, you need to have a picture, a photograph, something that you can go by. Because how do you know what to weather it, what it looks like without uh, looking at a picture? So, you know, you can grab an iPad um, or your computer, uh, go online, um, and you can look for uh, online railroad pictures. There's uh, railroadpictures.net or railpictures.net. Uh, and take a look at those and just bring them up on your iPad and uh, or you know print them out take a photograph or go to go to the site where you want to whatever box car caboose locomotive you want to weather go to that site take pictures but that's most important is to have a picture of the item and or victim you're going to weather okay number one you gotta have some testers dull coat uh, this stuff is I think what did I pay for it about five dollars at you can get this at Hobby Lobby or Michaels um, or train shop. Uh, this is going to be used to dull coat your your I'll just call box car dull coat your box car. This presents a layer on the car so that you can add uh, weathering to it. And we're going to use this frequent frequently. Whenever we're, we uh, weather between steps, you're going to dull coat it. So this is very important. Dull coat testers. Okay, and the, the next item is a Krylon Camouflage. You can get this at Walmart, Target, wherever. This is uh, used to coat the bottom chassis of, the, of your box car or caboose. So that's what that's for. And, and then you're going to want a can of Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum, this is an ultimate finish rusty metal primer. Again, you know, Target, Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot. This is used for the trucks. This is actually the the truck color here. So those two trucks will be painted that Rust-Oleum primer. Okay, the next thing you're going to want is drafting tape or masking tape. You can use masking tape. You're going to use this to uh, mask off portions of the the box car that you don't want painted. 
With ours, it's going to be uh, the windows. Um, actually, it'll be these windows. These windows here, I'm going to cover up with styrene. Now, that's not something you're going to have to do uh, for most of your box cars, but uh, in case you ever do, I use Evergreen Scale Model Sheet Styrene. You just cut this stuff up, and uh, this will cover cover all the windows, like uh, our model right here, like this. So this is all styrene here, and inside here, this window is styrene. Uh, as well as these two windows here and there. But again, you're not going to use this for every model. This just happens to be this particular caboose. So I just wanted to let you know, if you do have to do some modifying, um, Evergreen Styrene is a great product. And of course, glue. Um, I use Tester's Liquid Plastic Cement. Well, actually, it's Model Master. I think it's still Tester's. And then uh, I like the Loctite uh, Super Gel. This stuff works really good. So any parts you need to glue or whatever, you've got these these two guys right here. They work out just fine. All right, paint brushes. You're going to want these. These are my favorite. These these flat squared off paint brushes. These are cheap. I mean, you can get these at you know again Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You know, get a bunch of them. Um, these are used for uh, applying paint. Nice wide angles, and they work great. I can't say enough about the wide angle squared off paint brushes. You need those. You're also going to need uh, fine tipped paint brushes. We're going to use these for applying the streaks. So you want something fine that we can pull down and apply the streaks to this model. Disposable latex gloves. You'll see I'm wearing them right now. These are essential. Why do you need uh, the latex gloves? Well, for one thing, it, it's nice, you know, when you're painting, you know, you don't get your hands all crappy, but this is especially useful for not getting fingerprints on your model. The worst thing to do is to be able to put this model together and have it weathered and find some big fat fingerprint on the side. It's horrible. So you have to have latex gloves. Now, these gloves I got at uh, Lowe's, they're 10 bucks for a pair, I think a hundred pair, um, a must have for any project, any weathering project you do. The next item you're going to want is this Badger paint mixer. It's a battery operated paint mixer. Just takes one double A. This thing is fantastic. I mean, I, I hadn't had this for a long, I hadn't used one for a long time. Turn it on, gets inside the paint, mixes it up. I mean, you don't have to sit there and shake the jar. These things are fantastic, worth their weight in gold. I think these are like, I don't know, 10, 12 bucks, something like that, but buy one. All right, now this is the uh, designer Goosh or Gosh, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Goshe, uh, burnt umber. Uh, this is the paint that will make the rust on your on your box cars. Uh, and you're also going to want burnt sienna. Again, this is Windsor and Newton designer Goosh, Gosh, whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, these things are worth their weight in gold. These are you have to have this to, in order to uh, whether you're your car properly. It's just a must-have. Um, you can buy sets, but these are sold individually. Got these at, uh, I think, Michael's. Um, then I've got white as well. Uh, it might be a good idea to have black too, but um, definitely the Burnt Sienna and the Burnt Umber, a must, must-have. Okay, and this is a full set of uh, Art Creation uh, Expression Gusha. Gosh, I paid $6.12 for this entire set. Uh, this is the paint that you're going to use to weather your boxcar caboose. What is this used for? We use this to dull it. You're going to mix some of this together. That's kind of be the, going to be the tricky part. Um, for instance, this, this caboose, I had to mix a little bit of orange, a little bit of white, just a tiny bit of black, and then we paint that, we paint over the original car. To make to give it that dull weathered look so this is another must have you must have these in order to be able to weather your your box car caboose and here's another set here and again you can buy these fairly cheap i think the retail price on this is 17 dollars but um you got to have these okay the next thing you got to have is a complete set of, this is AIM brand. There's another brand out there, I forget the name, but these are the weathering powders. Now you can buy these as a, as a set. I think this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A set of eight weathering powders. Uh, again, this is a must have. You have to have these in order to weather your boxcar 
caboose, whatever. Um, the most important is the light rust color and uh, the dark rust color. And we'll be using dark earth, medium earth, and some black and some gray. But they come in these uh, rectangular boxes here, uh, weathering powders, and they're just absolutely fantastic. Have to have these. Uh, and again, they're you get them at the through Walther's catalog or your hobby store. I've not seen them at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, so I think you may have to order these like through a train hobby store or something like that. But uh, again, they come with a lot. I mean, there's a lot of powder. I mean, this this these are going to last a lifetime easily. I don't recall what I paid for these. I'm going to guess. Uh, Forty dollars, maybe something like that. Not sure. Another important item that goes with your weathering chalks is a place to actually set your caboose box car over to weather. You notice that I've got uh, it's a large, well, not real large, cardboard box here, and uh, you just set the box car over the box, and then you weather it. So then all your extra weather powder drops to the to the this pad right here and you can take that stuff and you can reuse it so don't waste your that way you don't waste your your powder so I've got a whole box contained with all my powder all my brushes and uh, I think you should too it'll make it a lot easier and then I've got a palette here so this palette's got you know the black the dark rust the medium rust all different colors you can just grab whatever you need mix and match uh, to make to weather your model all right, the next item you're going to want is some cosmetic applicator sponges. Uh, your girlfriend, your wife may have these. You can snag them from her or you can go to uh, Wally World and get some for yourself. Basically, it's just, just a wedge. It's a sponge. What do we use this for? This is for when we put the goosh on here. It's for like pulling it down nice and even. You know, put a little bit of water on there. Um, you can also use it for your powders, but um, it's pretty essential. And they come in handy, they're easy to use. You know, when you're done with them, you just pitch them. All right, the next item you're going to want is just uh, plain old uh, model paint. Um, this happens to be Polyscale uh, Model Railroad Paint. I don't know that you can get this anymore. Um, you might have to get uh, testers, uh, but you want to get something that's uh, Kind of a brown this is a this is called dirt kind of a dirty brown like that what are you going to use this for are you going to use this to uh, highlight your car uh, dirt on the bottom um, white this is reefer white um, this is, we're going to be using this to dry brush to pull out the highlights and then uh, grimy black grimy black is is a is a lighter black it's it's uh it's not like a black black so it's kind of cool, it looks kind of dirty, kind of grimy, exactly what it says. So find a color in, in testers or some other product name um, that's going to be close to this. Or you could mix some black and white together to make this kind of a, kind of a dark grayish black. But uh, those are also very important and something that you'll use quite frequently. Alright, what the heck is this? This is sophisticated finishes. What does this do? This is actually going to make the top of your uh, box car caboose rusty. You can buy this at Michael's. I bought both these units at Michael's. So this is an iron metal surfacer. So you, you put this on first with a brush and it's got metal pieces in there. Let it dry. Then you put on this uh, rust antiquing solution. I think it's some sort of a, I mean it's some nasty stuff but uh, I want to say it's some, what does it say? I don't know what it says in the back here but it's uh, this will actually make make your car rust. You put this on, you got to wait overnight, and you come back in the morning and it's all nice and rusty. Really cool. Uh, so these are another must-have, just, just for the roof. I only use this for the roof, and it just makes it look good. Obviously you're gonna, not going to need this for a tanker or anything like that, but anything with, like, with a metal, uh, aluminum, solid steel roof, uh, this stuff works wonders. Okay, so if your car comes with pl a plastic wheel sets, don't use them. Use metal wheel sets. These are the Intermountain semi-scale 33 inch wheel sets. Um, I paid $9.50 for them. They're all metal. 
Um, again, don't use, I mean, if your car comes with metal wheels, fine, no problem. But if you, you've got a box car or a locomotive, not locomotive, but a caboose that's got plastic wheel sets, don't use them. They're, they're just crap. Uh, these run a lot smoother, they're a lot easier to paint, and they just look so much better. Airbrush. Do you need an airbrush? No. This is optional. Um, this is a Badger 155 Anthem that I got on sale, extremely cheap at Michael's. I think I paid $30, $35 for it. It's a $150 airbrush. Then you can have a tank too. What do I use the airbrush for? Uh, simply spraying upward on the bottom here to give kind of a kind of a dirt look on the trucks and on the sides of the car. We can accomplish that using our, our powders and pastels so uh, you don't need the airbrush but if you got one um, great that's what we use it for. What the heck am I doing with the hair dryer? Last but not least, yes, you need a hair dryer. What do you use this for? This speeds up the drying process so if you're we're using our, our Gucci paints on here, and uh, we want it to dry quickly. We just use the hair dryer. Um, works good for the dull coat as well. That way, we don't have to sit there, you know, half a day waiting for this, this stupid thing to dry. You just take your hair dryer out and uh, get on it and get it dry. Um, you don't want it on high heat because you'll melt the plastic. You want it on low heat, and then you're going to press this button for cool. You want to cool it down now and then. And again, this is a cheap hair dryer. I think I paid 10 bucks for this at Wally World. So uh, don't take your girlfriends or your wives because they'll kill you. Just buy your own. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for the uh, supply list. Again, um, these are my, you know, this is my list. Um, I put this together over, you know, a 20-year period. Um, this weathering job that you see here is you know it's it's not some master weather job this is this is I'd say this is probably mid-range you've got the you know idiots out here taking their cars and dunking them in aquariums um, and other solutions it's just stupid you want to do something you got to do it right it takes time there's nothing quick about this absolutely nothing quick about it but in the end the results are fantastic and, and you'll and you'll like them and again you don't have to be a you don't have to be a pro at this not at all. Um, the next video that we'll, that I'll show, we'll just take it step by step, and I'll show you how to make your your box cars, your cabooses, even your locomotives uh, look like this. For now, until next time.